what's shown here? So this is uh, switching gears. This is we're looking at uh, the DUI driving under the influence fentanyl concentrations uh, that we found in 2020. So these are blood samples that are sent to NMS labs uh, for for people that were suspected of driving uh, under the influence of uh, drugs uh, or potential other reasons of the uh, way they were driving. And uh, in this case, we um, tested, uh, we had 2,345 cases uh, that were individuals that were alive that had fentanyl on board. Of course, other drugs may also be present, but this was specifically looking at fentanyl. And we had a mean concentration of 9.5 nanograms per milliliter, a median of 5.3. And then for norfentanyl, a mean of 5.42 and a median of 2.2. And again, just to clarify, for these 2,345 cases, those individuals were alive, is that right? Correct. And you indicated the average fentanyl level, I believe, is 9.59 nanograms per milliliter, is that right? Yes. And the average norfentanyl level for those cases was 5.42 nanograms per milliliter, is that yes. right? Next slide, please. And what's shown here? So this is just a breakdown of the fentanyl concentrations we found in, in drivers that were alive. So the, the, almost the majority of them were under five nanograms per milliliter of fentanyl. Um, and then we had another 26.3% that were between 5.1 and 10 nanograms per milliliter. And then the next set of data was uh, we had 216 cases which were uh, between 11 and 15 nanograms per mil. So that would be in the same area of Mr. Floyd's level of 11 nanograms per milliliter. And then we had several, uh, quite a few cases that were even greater than that. Uh, we had uh, 109 that were between 16 and 20, 81 that were between 21 and 26, 133 between 26 and 50, and then we actually had 53 cases uh, in living subjects where the fentanyl was greater than 50 nanograms per milliliter. So comparing Mr. Floyd's level to the driving population where individuals were alive, um, his level was within a quarter of the pie of the DUI cases that, that NMS Labs has received, is that right? Right, he would, he would be right in there with about the uh, 80th percentile. And you indicated that those levels um, for drivers were found in 53 cases higher than 50 nanograms per milliliter, is that right? Correct. So those individuals were alive and essentially driving at that time. Yes, yeah, pretty amazing. All right, next slide please. And what's shown here? So this uh, is uh, uh, basically the postmortem concentrations uh, or samples that were hospital blood samples that were submitted by Mr. Floyd for Mr. Floyd, and we found fentanyl at 11 nanograms per milliliter and norfentanyl at 5.6 nanograms per milliliter. Next slide, please. So this slide shows uh, what the ratio of the parent drug to the metabolite is. So 11 nanograms per mil divided by 5.6, the norfentanil, gave Mr. Floyd a ratio of fentanyl to norfentanil of 1.96. And essentially, does this slide show just the way in which you would calculate the fentanyl to norfentanil ratio? Yes. Next slide, please. What's shown on this slide? So this uh, slide shows uh, the ratios of fentanyl levels between 9 and 13 nanograms per milliliter. Uh, so that range was chosen because uh, Mr. Floyd's fentanyl concentration was 11 nanograms per milliliter. And when we do uh, driving under the influence work, we actually assign an uncertainty of measurement to that result. So if you, a driver had an 11 nanogram per mil fentanyl uh, present, we would report that as 11 nanograms per mil plus or minus two nanograms per milliliter. So I did this to, to see, well, what kind of ratios do we see between postmortem and DUI cases when the fentanyl level is between nine and 13 nanograms per mil? What kind of ratio do we see? And uh, we can see in the postmortem cases, the mean ratio of fentanyl to norfentanyl was 9.05 with a median of 5.88 versus the DUI population where the mean was 3.2, median 2.24. And then just to clarify, in the 
bar that shows the postmortem cases where there are 3,088 cases that you looked at between the range of 9 to 13 nanograms per milliliter? Yes, between 9 and 13 nanograms per milliliter. And the ratio in the postmortem cases was 9.05 on average, is that right? Correct. And then with respect to the DUI cases, you were looking at 275 cases between the range of 9 and 13 nanograms per milliliter, is that right? That's correct. And so the average ratio within that group was 3.20, is that correct? Yes. How does Mr. Floyd's ratio compare to that data set? So Mr. Floyd's ratio is, is roughly just a little bit below the median ratio in DUI. So in postmortem cases, we know uh, fentanyl concentrations can be much higher than norfentanyl concentrations uh, because frequently these are, the, uh, these are deaths due to fentanyl. Other drugs may be present, and there could be other reasons for the death. It doesn't say that these are all fentanyl intoxications. But just looking at it as a whole with a large amount of data, this is what we observed. And we know with the DUI population, they are alive, but other drugs may be present as well. So it's really just to sort of look at how things look differently in the, in the living and the postmortem population. And does this slide also show that Mr. Floyd's ratio was below the average and even below the median for that found in DUI cases? Yes. Right, next slide, please. So th this slide is actually just a sort of a summary of the previous slide, uh, but it basically shows um, the relationship between fentanyl and norfentanyl between the postmortem DUI cases and Mr. Floyd's. And again, does it show how norfentanyl levels essentially increase over time in relation to the fentanyl levels? As, as one lives and me metabolizes fentanyl, yes. Next slide, please. Now, did you also look at data with respect to methamphetamine for 2020 at NMS Labs? We did. And what's shown on this slide that's up right now? So this slide shows uh, the concentration of uh, methamphetamine found in uh, Mr. Floyd's hospital sample. Uh, it was 19 nanograms per milliliter. And then, uh, as we talked about earlier, um, amphetamine was below the reporting limit, so it was not reported. Not reported, but detected as part of your confirmation process. You, you can see we can see it in the confirmation data. Yes. Next slide, please. And what's shown here? So uh, this slide shows DUI uh, methamphetamine cases uh, with, with, with amphetamine and without amphetamine as a metabolite. So we had 3,271 cases that um, had methamphetamine in our driving under the influence population. 2,975 of these included amphetamine, and then uh, uh, 296 were just uh, methamphetamine with no amphetamine. And again, when we're talking about the DUI population, these are individuals, this 3,271 uh, number, individuals who are alive, is that right? Correct. Next slide, please. What's shown here? So this, this is a further breakdown of um, what we see in our DUI methamphetamine cases. So the mean methamphetamine concentration in all of our DUI cases was 378 nanograms per milliliter of methamphetamine. Uh, the median was 240 nanograms per milliliter. Uh, and in the 5 to 20 nanogram per mil range, with 5 being our lowest limit of quantitation, uh, we had 192 cases between 5 and 20 nanograms per milliliter, which is in that range that Mr. Floyd's methamphetamine was. And does this uh, graphic also show Mr. Floyd's level of 19 nanograms per milliliter? Yes, it does. It it's, uh, shows on the bottom. And again, 94% uh, of the DUI cases that we tested had methamphetamine concentrations in excess of 20 nanograms per milliliter. So in essence, Mr. Floyd's level was within the bottom, 5.9%. Is that right? Correct. Next slide, please. And what's shown here? So this is just a further breakdown of what kind of methamphetamine concentrations we have observed in drivers uh, in the last, uh, in 2020. And again, other drugs may be present. Um, but uh, in this case, we had 196 cases between 5 and 20, 306 between 21 and 50, 399 between 50 and 100, 571 between 101 and 200, 1,010 between 201 and 500, 
578 between 501 and 1,000, and then an additional 215 cases that methamphetamine was greater than 1,000 nanograms per milliliter. So again, you had 215 cases where the number was greater than 1,000 nanograms per milliliter, is that right? Correct. And the biggest piece of the pie, the 30.9% of the cases were between 201 and 500 nanograms per milliliter, is that right? Yes. So Mr. Floyd's level of 90 nanograms per milliliter, that was exceptionally low, is that right? In relationship to the DUI driving population, yes. Nothing further, Your Honor. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.